Hello everyone, and welcome back to Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai with the Scramble for the Far East mod. So, I've been able to corner the last part of the Great British Horde. Um, and there isn't much more to say about it, more than... I actually tried to do this off-camera, because um, I was kind of fed up with doing these big battles they're kind of they're taxing to go through N not just to play them but um, also to do the end screen because i have to re-watch like an hour of battle trying to pick out the best part and then you have to edit that one hour so it takes quite a lot of work uh, so i was actually trying to um, get around this one but it unfortunately crashed and so i'm doing this again and i thought you know what i'll do it do it in the video then anyways um, so, with me complaining out of the way, let's go ahead and trash these bastards and uh, get rid of this murder stack once and for all. Right off the start here, I once again neglected to set up which unit comes into battle first, which is a major flaw and I keep doing it. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, we'll have to work around it. Anyways, um, as I've already played the battle, although it crashed, I know where the enemy is getting his reinforcements from. And he's going to get a lot of it out from around here. I think it was further up here, but I'm not entirely sure. It kind of looks like it would be here through the flat ground. And then they're also going to get through here. So I want to take those on as soon as possible and destroy them. Um... And we'll go from there. To attack, oh, look sir. at that. They do come right out of... Oh, they... Okay, so they came through two areas. So I wasn't completely wrong. I've set up the guns to fire either side. And we're going to get all of these moving this way. Um, I'm going to get quite a bit of goons. Quite a bit of hussars. Quite a bit of other troops. We got these Oldenburg cavalry ready to set up to uh, spring into action. And then these guys. It's going to move quickly here to set up and be able to fire. One of these units is going to be facing that way. While the other one moves forward and trying to capture or come close enough to fire at these. These units need to be moved, especially the general. So we have some coming in. More is going to come in as we defeat more enemy units over here. So it's going to be important to set up. Looks like three of them are about to uh, kind of escape. I'm going to try my best to box them in there. Let's go back and take a look what's going on here. It's growing pretty good. Looks like we have defeated two units that are retreating. We are getting fired at from the hill. And as the British have longer range, I cannot really respond. But at least they're not laying fire into the important troop, which is the guard units, which are firing over here. I do have my general close by. He can come in and support a little bit. Oh, we are getting fired from the hill. Ooh, that's nasty. Let's move up. Uh, can we... You know what? We'll mobilize the Dragoons. The enemy is farther away over here. We can mobilize the Dragoons to set up over there. My general is moving in. I don't know how much these guys are adding to that fight, so I'm going to withdraw these guys. Looks fine. These kind of need to come up to be able to join in. Better fight the enemy over there. And then the cavalry needs to be set up. Okay, the dragoons coming in. They will be able to help with the guys on the hill. Why aren't you guys firing? I don't get that. I'm supposed to be firing at those guys. We can have the rest coming up here as well. The 
goons now being able to lay on the guys on the hill. We should focus in artillery on them. And then the artillery should be focusing in on the troops over here. We're doing pretty well. The guards have lost a lot of manpower because we're uh, there's quite a heavy fight going on here. I wonder if it'll be wise to do a cavalry charge to kind of destroy this. So we can kind of focus on this. Dragoons are losing a little bit of manpower. Right, we are dealing with those guys and we are dealing with this. Okay, now the Dragoons are getting flank fired over there. So we're going to hold them back. You know what? Let's send in the cavalry and then we'll go to focus against these units. These two units have just been sitting there taking fire just so they're not firing onto these. You will hold your position. Oh, look at that. And the guards are not happy with being flank fired from the hill. And these guys are certainly not being happy, being completely overrun by the Oldenburg cavalry. I'm going to order them back. We can fire shrapnel now at these as they advance. And we were successful in taking these guys down. Let's see if we can continue this struggle. By moving more troops in to aid in that fight. Dragoons can sit there to kind of aid in that struggle. Right, shrapnel continue to fire over there. Oh, they they're firing on these. They're not firing on the guards which are actually firing back at them. Which is um, interesting and kind of silly of the enemy to do it that way. Seems like that is under control, so I'll be focusing on this side. I think we can gain a little bit of ground here. What are you firing at? You're firing at the wrong units, although it's too close right now to fire at that. Why don't you fire set fire to some houses that could look good in the um, end screen with a bit of fire going on? Right, so the enemy was dealt with over here. And I think we've got a pretty good setup there if more enemy units come out through there. Uh, what? You know what? Let's pull these ba guys back, draw the enemy closer to us, and then continuously fire shrapnel on these. There's still a whole host of British troops. In total, I was be I could draw on 18,000 men, I believe, while the enemy had close to 20 something thousand. There was a clear advantage, anyways for our enemies. We pull them in. And then we move up again. Oh, now we've set fire to some houses that looks nice. Old fire. Maybe some more houses. Fire over there. Or oh, we only set fire to a little shed out front. Well, we can actually now join in the fire there. That's nice. And these are about to be able to join in and fire as well. That's also nice. 
I thought you'd be able to set that on fire. Um, let's figure out, like, they've made proper long line here. Okay, I'm not really setting that on fire, am I? We're wasting ammo. We should get closer so I can fire shrapnel. We've got an, an additional uh, amount of grenadiers and an infantry unit. Should take up the center there. I'm surprised we haven't been able to beat the the troops that are here. And now the enemy is coming down quite strongly. It looks like they're drawing the line like that now. So it could be another opportunity here for the cavalry to strike. Be able to strike through here. But I could probably actually use these guys over here. There's no real risk. Sir, a unit has fired off all the Just as I selected it, it's out of ammo. It will leave the field. Most of these, I think, will leave the field and will have these guys take over the command of this. Because here is where uh, the fighting is going to take place. Oh, both, un both guard units are now out of shots. Which is going to be quite deadly. Given how ma the amount of enemy units here. We're actually going to... Yeah, this is not good. Everyone needs to pull back. And the cavalry needs to go in to cover the these guys. As they now... Everyone from this side is ordered to retreat. Not super happy with the, the fact that they've all, they're they always choosing the um, shortest side to retreat out of because uh, that sometimes means that they retreat straight into the enemy fire. I think we'll just turn the gun this way. Oh, crap. I mean, we saved these units from total annihilation. Um, I mean, the cavalry will be sure to get out of there, so... Back in. And then we've got an additional... Now, s five, six units coming in. Which should be plenty enough now that these guys have kind of been broken up quite a bit. I know you're tired, but you need to advance into the enemy fire immediately. One of your units can no longer fire, General. And who is that? Alright, set up the gun. Oh, we got additional units coming in. Good, good. Alright, we need to set up as quickly as possible here. We have um, Gurkha rifles. I think we have a possibility of, if we can quickly snipe these two out and protect our flank, then I think these will be plenty enough to deal with the rest of the enemy here. Oh, the cannons out of shot. Then you will be ordered to leave. And you will be firing back here instead. Yeah, the flank fire here, they did not like it. And here comes the Dragoons. And it looks like that could be enough, yeah, to break that unit. One unit will pursue, 
the other one will go move to break this one. We have problem with this unit moving into the fight. Actually, what you can do is you can sit and shoot from over here. And then you two will move back. We have range to fire most of these. And then you can swing around and actually attack these guys in the back. And make sure that this one's gone. You should probably turn to face this unit. Dragoon fire should help. And if I can get the artillery to join in, that's good. We got rid of them over there. And then you'll be pushed back to deal with this one. And these units will gain ground. Are they pushing towards the hill now? Oh, we got more. We got British troops now turning up here. Good. And I've been. I'm gonna be able to catch them. Catch them sleeping. But it looks like they could be pushing towards the hill. There's a concentration of enemy troops right there. So with the new fresh troops coming in, we should see about an attack on this area. Cavalry is spent, but I've got Hussars coming in. And we got additional units moving forward. We need a few more here because I can still see that the enemies are coming through out here. Dragoons will retire. We'll still hold this line. A lot of these troops around here are kind of weak, so I will set us on the back side. You know what? We can set quite far down, I think. And then we can have units in the back as well. And we'll do something like that that for the disposition of troops let's concentrate the generals in one area and then I want the artillery to join in and fire on the troops over here looks good looks good let's go back to this area okay so the I only have one artillery gun actually do you have range to fire shrapnel on this? No. I want you to fire on these guys. Push forward so you're able to fire on these. And then as soon as, hopefully, these guys come above the ridge, everyone in the back here will kind of be able to shoot at them. It should be good. Is that units? That's units leave it's not, not coming in. I feel like we've got a pretty good chance if we push in enough troops hard enough on these. But first I need to get rid of a lot of the troops here. Sometimes the units don't like fire, which is annoying. The enemy walks on parade right in front of us. Oh, the unit left. This is decided to leave. Right. And these guys have now a second line to rely on. These are kind of tired, but here I feel like here is where we could push and destroy a lot of the forward units here. And then with the rest of the troops here moving forward, I feel like the enemy troops are kind of clumped together in such a way that they could be easy targets for us moving through. As soon as this bastard is gone though. 
up onto the ridge. We'll leave these two, just in case more reinforcements come through here. But otherwise, we should start moving troops in on the attack on this area. Alright, let's move across. Let's go bold. With the cavalry. In close support. I didn't get any more cavalry, did I? Uh, Alright, let's move down from the hill. Then we move forward, move forward, everywhere. Looks good. Artillery should be firing as well at this point. You know what, these guys from the hill should be able to fire above the rest, right? So, why don't we do like that? Looks good. Feel like we can catch these guys napping. And that we'll be able to free up these troops on the flank and bring them up into that. Might be able to utilize the dragoons a few more times. We got all this cavalry moving in. I want to move. I want to move more troops towards this because they're like now properly setting up to uh, face us. Which could be a big problem here. Ooh, they're going to I think they're going to be able to set up there before we're ready. Yeah, they're able to shoot at the uh I was hoping to catch these while they were still, like, forming up. Which I feel like we could have done... ...a lot more damage. Oh, the Hussars uh, still managed their task. And they're going to be able to accomplish a little bit more, even. I'm pushing through. We have we have extra troops here. I can push them through, set them up in the house. Then we have, like, a constant unit in the back of the enemy's uh, situation, as it were. Ready to uh, constantly fire upon them and as we know the enemy has a real trouble firing at those houses I kinda need more cavalry here but like we've got dragoons and they're pretty spent they need to be dealing with this unit right here first yeah we're breaking up a lot of enemy troops right now what did you do? you charged that for some reason? The Hussars uh, have been mighty successful. But I feel like that force is now properly spent. And I cannot really rely on it anymore. I can get you in through here. Oh, sh crap! That's British troops! Behind us! Um... That's a major problem. Up onto the backside of the hill there. Crap. I'm gonna move the general unit. All the cavalry joining in to crush this one regiment. I'm not sure if it's uh, necessary now to go into a house.
Let's see if we can push up a little bit. All of these are now breaking. I wonder if... Oh, there's another British unit? That we missed? I want... I really want my cavalry actually to come through here. Okay, so we've got massive amount of British troops attacking through here. Push forward to get rid of this, and then all of these need now to prepare for uh, the troop, the oncoming troops over here. Can I get artillery shots in here? The poor cavalry units. Alright. Fire on, fire on that one. I want them to get closer so I can move up in force on the other side. I have a lot of troops over here. It feels like it's kind of too late to mobilize them right now. Let's get the cavalry through. There's a lot of troops retreating. I really don't want to do a fourth battle. Okay, it's time to uh, go across the hill. All right, all the cavalry is moving through. I'm going to put the unit in the house anyways. All right, we're moving up. In force. The British are not responding as of yet. We've got one troop that has retreated. Ooh, they're all gone now. Get rid of them. Not everyone is really able to fire. You know what? They're really broken. And then uh, the only cavalry I've got close is the generals. They will join in. As we move down the hill in a big bayonet attack. A unit is running from the battlefield, sir. That may be, but I'm pretty sure we'll break the enemy. We'll break their spirit before they break ours. Yeah, we've got two units retreating over there. Yeah, they're all gone. They're all gone. And we are victorious. God damn it. Um, we're slaughtering everyone around this area. Unfortunately, I feel like there's a lot of British troops that got away. But I'll be trying to get rid of as many of these as possible. And with that, we should have, like, ended out this. And now I, like, properly feel confident that there's not going to be enough troops for anything left to fight us here. So I should be able to conquer it. And, like, you know, you're not going to miss anything substantial after this. But there we go. Victory.
probably the worst one of uh, these three major battles because we lost the most troops. I think increasingly we have lost more and more men in these battles and the enemy has lost less and less if I'm not mistaken. So they deployed 24,000 they lost 14,000 which means about 10,000 are left um, we deployed 18,000 or 18,000 in total were um, able to join the battle where we lost 7,000 that's a lot I think in the previous one we lost 5,000 so that's 2,000 more um, looking through here no unit was lost which is good and looks like I deployed most of those 8,000 or 18,000 because we can see most armies have units that have lost uh, manpower, especially the main attacking one. It's uh, a few, uh, like half an army that wasn't, that doesn't, didn't came onto the battlefield. The rest of them were used in battle. Highest kills goes to a Hessian infantry with 900 kills. So we can see here, lifeguard did not perform as well as they could have done. But then again, they were fed met with a pretty difficult situation. Plain ground. They had pretty good targets to fire at though, but still like plain ground straight ahead. The enemy was standing there. Big clumps. But then again they were firing back as well. So um, but there we have that. Close victory. Wonderful. With this I feel like the important part after this battle will be, like, we used, yeah, one of the problems here as I pushed forward, as you can see, we've got actually a few armies behind us. I'm not too concerned about that, even if they strike us again. My main concern was to move forward and actually capture this area. Because then they can't recruit any new troops. And also, they have, they're constructing a health care clinic to increase the replenishment rate of all the troops here. And I definitely don't want that. So I want to take this castle as soon as possible. And deal a crushing blow to the enemy that way. Otherwise, what has happened is... There was an assassin, he made an assassination attempt on one of my generals. And he has convalesced, so he's moving back. And he'll be joining his army over here soon enough. Also, I gained a new general. I am building up a tier 2 army. Which we're gonna have to launch against France. And so I've been building up these colonial... Uh, Saber Cavalry with like massive charge bonus. They have a 44 point charge bonus, which would bring it. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. So huge charge bonus. So I brought the them down from over here. We met like a little remnant of French army. God knows what they turned up from hiding in the woods up in the mountains here. It's like that Japanese soldier that uh, like kept kept fighting to like, like 1975 or something like that. Suddenly there's like French people coming out of the hills in 1980s Japan and they're like, oh, the war is still going on. Um, although that, I mean, at that point it would be like the second generation of the French troops because that's uh, like a hundred, more than a hundred years from now. But anyway, so we've got a new general. Von Hindenburg, Kaspar von Hindenburg. So he'll be joining the ranks. Here's another one. Oh yeah, this guy, Holtz Edmund, he was turned by Geisha. And but he's been on his own ever since. And he's been like ducking in and out of the mountains. So we've got a traitor that's running about. And at some point I should be able to chase him down. It could be that he's looking now, finally, after like drinking and partying or whatever he's been doing up in the hills, that he's finally coming down and he's going to take control of whatever was left of the troops that was here. 
<laughs> so we've got the traitor there. I have. They're, they're not doing anything. They're not, not like raiding an infrastructure or anything. So I haven't bothered going after them um, because they're like they're so pathetic. But eventually, I should go ahead and kill that traitor. The Americans. I was hoping the Americans would send, like, their troops and invade, possibly invade the Russians. Or invade the French, or at least send their navy up there. And they were kind of, looked like they were kind of building towards that. They did not do that. But now they're on the move through the land route instead. So we've got three American armies. They're kind of shit. They're not great. I don't know why they keep getting colonial fun infantry they should be able to get a lot better troops out of this area right here like they have all that is needed to build up uh, I don't know why they need supreme corn to like influence the other areas around but I guess they need that for happiness but that also seems kind of pointless could probably build a better building to deal with that um, yeah. In terms of what we have left here, I could end turn, but I feel like I would be possibly dragged into smaller battles, and I feel like this is probably it for this episode, right? To not make it too long. But, yeah. I'm hoping now that there shouldn't be... There shouldn't be... A fourth battle. Like, they should be broken up enough that and also split because they're kind of split in two here as you can see so uh, there shouldn't be any more battles here and next time I'll see you guys will probably be the fall of 1865 and I would have hopefully captured both these areas and then set up towards going against the areas on this side currently in terms of um, our victory conditions we hold 37 out of 60 provinces so we're a good way on our way to getting there we're need we need another 23 provinces which achieve we're definitely achievable um, what I kind of want to do after I've de after dealing with the British is I want to see if I can secure a lasting peace I don't think I will but a lasting peace to this and then we will just up and move most of the armies either if we go and invade the French or which would be sort of bring us more speedy end to the end of the campaign um, would be to invade Korea and the Russians and I mean I could probably quickly as I recall from playing the Russians in this campaign like once you get going against the Koreans like you can quite quickly move through because they have they have a lot of traditional troops so we could go go through that pretty quickly also the in terms of the uh, Russians we could easily send in an invasion force and overwhelm this area and this is the only area that I need to capture, so we would be able to gain that pretty quickly. And even with all of this, I could easily just bypass the French, because, like, I don't actually need to go there, given the situation. But I kind of want to test that. I kind of want it as uh, use to use the um, Tier 2 army. So there we go with that. And I don't think there's anything else I need to say to you in terms of like I've been building we've got kind of blueprint going down for how we're building the provinces I've been building a lot of these um, training camp or military universities and also libraries and research centers so at this point in terms of technology I'm up to 106 percent in research rate you start with 50 I think and at the highest level each building gives 8 um, 
So that's kind of a lot. Um, and we're up to 96 on arms science. So we're progressing quite well here. Last technology I got was monetary system. So we reduced administration cost. We reduced construction of farms. The thing is though, I've built most of that already. And then tax rate increase. I'm going for economic thought and critique, which will increase um, the amount of uh, drill sergeant that I can use. So I should be able to get a fifth one. I think I have four right now, which are set up for these armies right here. So we should get another one to train these guys, which should be pretty good. Um, gonna go ahead and assassinate this pretty good the inter interesting I don't know if that's interesting uh, let's see what else is there there isn't really anything um, else to need to be said I've lowered tax rate like we're making so much money at this point I've lowered it to the lowest point that I can and we're still making almost a hundred thousand from tax. And then I'm making almost a hundred thousand for trade, eighty-five thousand from trade. Um three thousand from commerce rating, five thousand from my vassal, the Americans. Uh <laughs> they're paying I'm I'm their landlord. They're uh, paying me to rent the the knob end, as it <laughs> were, on this peninsula. Which is like very underdeveloped because it's all woods. But they seem happy with that. Um, or like uh, now they seem pretty keen on capturing other territory. The amount, I just like an ending, uh, ending on a thought here. The amount of bodies littered kind of in the valley here, the road in between these two areas, the amount of dead people that are in this area, because like if I recall correctly, there was like 20,000 in the first one and then probably 20,000 in the last one and then 20, there's 60,000 dead bodies, at least at least 60,000 dead people in between air, which has happened during a pretty rapid, like, area. Like, that's a lot of people that have died here. And with, and, w and on that note, let's end the episode. Right, so, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.